you can never have enough clamps right right but storing them can be a nightmare they take up oceans of space well I've got an idea I'd like to share with you for utilizing some space you may not have considered so clamp storage I'm sure you've tried as many different variations as I have this is my primary clamp storage rack utilizing an idea from some wonderful chap on YouTube this is where I keep my Bessie K clamps some pipe clamps and some F clamps I've got some more F clamps over here and my speed clamps live over here got some more speed clamps here above the bench actually these are quite handy here but distributed and finally I've got some speed clamps here spring clamps and some G clamps here so what I'd really like to do is to try and group them together a bit more than they currently are I can honestly spend minutes stood here in total bewilderment wondering where the hell the clamp is that I need so my idea is this up there well not there there as you can probably tell although you may not have noticed I'm a short person not very tall vertically challenged just a tad so I've got masses of height in fact I can only just touch the ceiling even though it's only about 2.2 meters I think so this is dead space I'm in no fear of smacking my bonds so why not utilize it for clamp storage that's a lot of clamps but there's a lot of space up there all of these clamps have one thing in common this section of the clamp there's no barrier at this end no fixed piece so they'll all slide into a something and I'm thinking pipe so if I'm going to utilize pipe to store them in which I think is a stunning idea this plastic UPVC pipe is cheap as chips I think three pounds four pounds for a three meter length so price for this isn't going to be a barrier but there are some um, potential issues I could build into it if I'm not careful I need to be able to see what the length of the clamp is or to know what the length of the clamp is without having to pull it out so that means that I really need to cut the pipe to suit the length of the clamp so that I can see at a glance that that's a shorter clamp and that's a longer clamp and I also need to make sure that the pipe's not angled allowing the clamp to slide out so ideally a, a slight back angle or at the very least completely level and my ceiling's on a pitch so I think my first job is going to be to sort the clamps out into lengths and types types is going to be easy I've got two types essentially F clamps and speed clamps all of the clamps I've got on the table at the moment except for the heavy duty will fit in inch and a quarter pipe the heavy duty need to go in inch and a inch and a half pipe I may need some more pipe so here's the biggest pipe the inch and a half and I'm thinking that I don't need a lot of material above the pipe to support it I need the material beneath so stop stop going. stop 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 don't listen to him the man's a dim-witted moron he doesn't know what he's talking about because he hasn't done the research I've done the research here it is a test piece you'd have thought he'd have learnt by now idiot so what he's failed to do apart from doing the research 
is to take account for the fact that there's space required both above the rail and beneath the rail. So after proving how to work in design, I went on and sliced down two pieces of ply off a sheet I had and started laying it out on the ply. And as I was laying it out, I realized that I could squeeze some more in if I offset the holes. Let me show you. So here's my layout. And this line that runs down the length of the board represents the center line at the max height, allowing for the top of the speed clamps. And what I've done is offset them slightly. I've dropped down. And by dropping down, I can still keep a 10 mil gap between the holes, but squeeze them up a little tighter. So the next one drops to there and then up a little and down a little and up a little. And that's really the closest they can come together, making maximum use of the space I've got available. But also I've got to take into account that my clamps might change. And in the words of the great Peter Sellers, I have come to this conclusion that I'm going to lay the whole board out based on that pattern that I've just shown you. If I start altering things to suit specific clamps, uh, the same situation will occur as I had to take into account on the router storage, router bit storage, sorry, that it needs to be fairly generalistic and accommodating. So I'm going to continue down the length of the board, laying out all of the holes, and then I'm going to move over to the drill press and try and figure out how in hell's teeth I'm going to balance this board. Okay, I believe I'm suitably prepared. Here's the front rail and it balances quite nicely for two thirds of it. But as I get towards this end, so it starts to become a bit unwieldy. So what I've done is clamp a piece of MDF to my bandsaw fence so it supports the piece there. And I've also screwed a noggin onto the end of my set of drawers so I've got extra support there as well and that seems to keep it really nice well supported right up to the very end and if you saw my recent video on making the drill charging station you'll know that I have no dust extraction ability facility at the drill press at all so this is going to make a stinking mess so I'm going to get masked up and ear defenders and PPE and then crack on. It will be see you on the other side this time. Well, that's all my holes cut. Oh, by the way, this is Hoskins. Hoskins people, people, Hoskins. Named after Bob Hoskins, of course. So all the holes are cut, time for the pipe. On the subject of the pipe, I've been thinking that I can get away with all the pieces of the pipe exactly the same length because of 
where the rack's going to be. I'll be able to see the longer clamps projecting out the back. Well, it's all the holes cut, all the pipes cut. Now a few finishing touches. A little round over on the corner. I know, stop gouging myself, because I'm a clumsy Clara. I'm not going to bother with the back. I don't think that needs it. Or shall I? For continuity's sake. I'm not going to be able to do this on the router table or on the disc sander, 2.4 meters wandering around on the back. So I'll just do these with a sander to the line. And then a little round on the bottom, just to make it pleasant to the eye. So I've just squared down from the ceiling to the back of the pipe, which is the back of the ply, which I won't be able to see because the support rail is on it. So I've measured forward at 18mm to represent the front of the ply, so that when I offer it up, I should be able to see. But I'm now wondering whether I should have marked the back of the rail, because I'll be out the back. I might do that as well. I may be forced to mute this bit if there's too much old man grunting. No grunting yet. This could take a while. I 
And here's the finished article. Long speed clamps, long F clamps, shorter F clamps, short speed clamps. And at the back, of course, by design, now, all right, I'm lying, it occurred to me partway through that I could accommodate the clamps that I displaced at the back. So I've got some speed clamps there, spring clamps and G clamps, all beautifully organized, looking fantastic. The project's come out better than I hoped because I've now got all of this space to accommodate even more clamps should the need occur. You'll notice, I'm sure, that the heavy duty F clamps aren't up there. I decided that I would keep them on the main storage rack over there purely due to their weight. Well, I sincerely hope you've enjoyed watching me assemble my pipe array might be a few tunes in the offing. If you have, perhaps you'd consider giving me one of your likes. And if you really enjoyed it, why not subscribe to this channel? Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Ta-ra!